Welcome to Digital Asset News. Take a top stories in cryptocurrency digital assets and break them down to bite-sized pieces. Today, pretty interesting stuff. First up, is Ethereum and DeFi still far-fetched or is Ethereum really a viable option for DeFi and all the requirements it needs? And should we be looking to a different project to make decentralized finance an actual scalable solution? Also, Bitcoin price may surge as fear and uncertainty strain global markets, but is there that much fear and uncertainty out there? We're going to take a real deep dive into that question, which could lead us to the answer of where is Bitcoin, cryptocurrency, and the entire digital asset market going? That'll lead us into question of the day. We're going to go over what you could possibly do if you get hacked for 3.5 Bitcoin. And we'll go over that last, but first, let's take a look at what's going on in the market. So today, it is uh, Monday, September 28th. So what do we got? Sunday was not a great day. Monday's looking a little bit better. Bitcoin, almost to the 11,000 magic mark. I like to see that. Maybe a uh, 10.9 today, up 1.6% for 24 hours. I will take those numbers. Ethereum, blasting past the 350, up to 364, 3.4% up. Fantastic. Tether's tether, nobody cares. XRP, 24 cents, watch out. Bitcoin Cash up to 2.6%, 2.32, nice. Polkadot making a massive run, 7.8% for a 24-hour period. I'd like to see that. And Chainlink finally above $10 as it uh, dipped massively from its all-time high of around 18, and now it's at 10.66. Hopefully, uh, we can see how far it can go. Maybe it's got a little bit more room to run. We'll find out. Binance Coin up, up, everything's up. Pretty big green day, except for Monero, 2.6. Don't understand why that would be, but uh, there it is. 2.9 down for NEO. Nice don't, NEO. Don't do it anymore. 6% for Cosmos and their interoperability. VeChain up 6%. I'd like to see that. IOTA, 7.8. Uh, who knows what's going to happen with IOTA? I don't know. Ethereum Classic, after their 51% attacks, no big deal. 3.1%. <laughs> synthetics uh and then oh omg network 31 percent and omg had this nice little uh rally because it was helping out ethereum with a network and trying to um deal with all the different gas fees so that's a reason for what's going on but i like to see that definitely uh basic attention token up six percent doge coin for you doge holders 0.5 Digibyte, and I never talk about Digibyte, and I'll apologize now. It's a good project, could do some good things. I don't own any, uh, but uh, maybe that could change. And Celsius Network almost breaking that dollar mark. Um, I gotta tell you, I gotta tell you, Celsius is on a quite a tear. And uh, I think they're up, I mean, massively for the entire year, 23% for seven days. And uh, I see great things in the horizon. So we'll see how that works out. But uh, let's jump in the, in the day's top stories. huh? So first up is Ethereum DeFi still far-fetched. And this really kind of lays out the scenario for what could happen if uh, we can't use Ethereum for decentralized finance and what needs to be done to uh, hit the criteria of what actually could make this sustainable. So what is this all about? So DeFi is the latest buzzword. Yes, we've heard nothing but uh, DeFi for the last month to two months. Everything from uh, synthetics to sushi to yam to whatever you na you name it, it's been there. I don't think it's I don't think it's right where it needs to be, but I see a massive potential. It just all depends on where is it going to be built and who's going to take over. Anyhow, the need for scrutiny into existing systems and Ethereum DeFi is top of the list. Martin Froehler, a mathematician, recently told me that there is no doubt that Ethereum DeFi is simply the best platform. Now, this is just one opinion uh, from Martin, but you got to understand that there are many opinions out there, and we're going to kind of go over everything that we can to see what's the best option. Anyhow, he states that DeFi is a global decentralized platform for money and any new kind of application. And Ethereum DeFi is on the world's second largest crypto platform to capitalize on the market after Bitcoin. And that is true. I mean, it's great to have, you know, a, a massive market cap, a massive network. But the problem with the um, just the the colossal nature of, of Ethereum is that there are problems, there are bugs, there are slowdowns, there are gas fees, which are astronomical that they need, really need to address. And if they can't address those things, uh, it cannot work, period. So this is the sentiment on the flip side of that. And it states not all experts are in favor. Froler, who happens to be the founder of the Mar4 platform. So first of all, I was like, what the heck is that? I've never heard of that. So what's Mar4? So I did a search and it came up nothing. So I had to take a look at uh, the LinkedIn profile for Froler here, Martin Froler. And it says, gives the about features. And then the founder of Morpher, M-O-R-P-H-E-R, not 
the other spelling. So then, of course, you go over here, and Morpher is a crypto stocks and forex exchange. So it's pretty interesting. Uh, I'm not going to go through it, but that's exactly what it is. So this is the CEO talking about an exchange. So maybe a little biased. Just saying. So it's safe. DeFi projects are reaching Ethereum, but experts say that the network is not yet able to, at its best, and its current capabilities are just not up to the standard. It's designed as such that everyone needs either to communicate with it, but they all have issues. The biggest hurdle in adopting on a large scale, as would be the incapability to handle more than 15 transactions in a second, and its block time is more than 15 seconds. So that's a big problem. Uh, when you're talking about, I mean, it's okay right now, and it's it's even taxed right now as, as the limited amount that it is. But Let's say we start to get all small businesses in, and let's say we start to get all types of people in, all types of retail, all types of institutional investors. They all want to use DeFi. What would happen? It would collapse. There's no way that at its current state that this could actually be sustainable. It just cannot happen. So what do we need to do? Well, let's go on. Ethereum is a great decentralized platform and Ethereum DeFi is a reality in the making. And that's what's going on right now with ETH 2.0. If you haven't heard, ETH 2.0 is going to be rolled out in phases and it's going to take about two years. And the first one's going to come up in November, uh, potentially even sooner. But there's really what it comes down to is three phases. Phase zero, phase one, phase two. Phase zero is right around the corner. And phase zero is the name given to the launch of the Beacon Chain. Beacon Chain will manage the Casper Proof of Stake prof protocol for itself and all of the sharded change. So this is where we're going to get to staking. This is where that magic number of 32 Ethereum is going to get to, where you're going to be able to stake that Ethereum, uh, gain some extra tokens or gain some extra Ethereum or gas by what you stake in this type of format. And we're gonna go from proof of work to proof of stake. And this is why it is so important. That is just phase zero and that's just coming up right now they've already gone off of the test nets everything went pretty well so it looks like they're going to move forward now that only solves one issue proof of work to proof of stake the other issue is the transactions and that won't be done until phase one and we're looking at another year six months to a year i think another year correct me if i'm wrong put it in the, in the comment section but phase one will be shard chains shard chains is the key to future scalability as they allow parallel transactions throughout and there will be 64 of them deployed in phase one over time. And then moving down, phase two is just a point in time where the functionality of the entire system will start to come together. Shard chains transition from simple data, compare containers to a structured chain state, and smart contracts will be reintroduced. So again, you're looking at a quite a timeline, uh, looking at over two years, and uh, hopefully it all works out. But the question really has to be asked is, what if it doesn't? So here's the problem right now, what they're trying to fix. Gas prices continue to rise, which is why Ethereum is not able to improve its performance even though there is a dire need in bringing new users to leave the network because of the situation. CEO of uh, Dex One Inch, Sergej Kuntz, stated that Ethereum does not have the capacity to host DeFi. It's not so easy that everyone everything gets fixed all of a sudden. Everything takes time. Obviously, we just talked about it. It's going to take at least two years. Lastly, Monir Benjamin, I'm sure I nailed that name, CEO of Paraswap, expressed that considering Ethereum DeFi, we should also consider how Layer 2 is unable to solve the user and problems and provide them a friendly environment. The biggest disadvantage would be that users have to worry about not being able to pay the funds immediately to the users, which we're talking about as far as layer two. And layer two, one of the most famous layer twos is the Lightning Network for Bitcoin, which is anybody using that? I don't think so. I mean, hey, Jack Dorsey from uh, Twitter is pushing it, but uh, I haven't seen too much on it. Lastly, it states he believes that where some products may find Ethereum DeFi a suitable option on Ethereum 2.0, it may not be true for all DeFi projects. So here's the problem, or here's my final thoughts. Someone's going to solve this problem. Someone's going to solve this problem. It just takes a person way smarter than me and way smarter than a, than, than, than a group collective. But it's going to happen. The reason why it's going to happen is because there's too much money at stake. There's too many things to fix. There's too much upside potential for someone or some group to not come out of the woodwork and go, this is how we're going to solve it. Now, that may be Ethereum. That may be some other place. That may be layer two, like Matic. What's Matic? Matic Network brings massive scale to Ethereum using adaptive version of Plasma with proof of stake based side chain. So uh, all the people who hold Matic, congratulations. I'm sure you're gonna make a uh, you know, good investment there, but I don't know if that's actually the case either. Could it be other forms? Could it be a Cardano? Could it be other some of a cryptocurrency project? I don't know, but all I can tell you is this. I don't know where it's gonna come from, but I'm hedging my bet. And that's why I have a, 
large plethora baskets of different cryptocurrencies because Ethereum, if I had to put my money on it, someone had to put a gun to my head, I would probably say, yeah, Ethereum's gonna solve it. They got a lot of smart people. They got a lot of leadership. Uh, they have a great community and they are gung-ho ready to do it. However, it's gonna take a long time. Is there somebody else in the war work? Could be, don't know what it is, but uh, I try to hedge my bets as best as possible. But at its current state, it cannot work. It needs upgrades. Let me know what you think in the comments section. Let's move on.